Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Today I'm making a part 3 of my top PS Vita ports in 2021 as I managed to get more of them running successfully because as you know it's not always such a simple straightforward process and there is many workarounds and procedures you need to follow in order to make it function. Often people do lose the lust to look for the solutions, thus they end up with problems stacked up to the brim and they expect others to find the answers for them. I can't claim I'm not a victim of this behavior, yet I'm able to not disregard the obvious signs of dissatisfaction and act accordingly. And what's the lesson? The lesson being that even such an insignificant issue as a non-functional PS Vita port can help you to keep moving forward with your original intentions. And now, without any further ado, let's dive right into the ports. As always, ports are in no particular order and let's start with my second favorite retro DOS game called Open Jazz, also known as Jazz Jack Rabbit. Open Jazz is an open source version of Jazz Jack Rabbit's game engine that was released by Epic Mega Games in 1994 for DOS PCs. It is a 2D platformer where you can run, jump and even shoot surprisingly. The style of the game is reminiscent to the Sonic the Hedgehog series though this one is more like a Jess the Jack Rabbit on some stimulants, frantically speeding all over the place, shooting at the poor innocent turtles and wasps, and then when he feels too decelerated, he just stuffs more magical carrots up his throat to compensate for the lack in judgment. As a kid growing up in 1990s, I didn't own Sega Genesis nor Nintendo, so the only means for me to get some 2D action fix to my brain was the ancient IBM machine, though we didn't possess one either, so what was left for me? The friends, obviously. They never let you down. Well, let's formulate it this way. They won't let you down as often as a non-friends. Yeah, that sounds much more believable. Why didn't you go to your man's PC, you may ask, same like with the Prince of Persia? Well, on that PC there was just that one game and I didn't possess neither floppy disks nor knowledge of how to install the new game in there and I sincerely doubt my mom would let me perform the action on her working PC. So I was left at the mercy of my friends. Like the game is single player only, so only one human can play it at any given time. Thus we could either take turns or if the friend wasn't so open-minded, I had to wait until he went for a piss or he was hungry. But you know kids, that never stopped any of them from enjoying the Jet Jack Rabbit for a whole evening. Overall performance of the game is uh, pretty good. Sound emulation also sounds pretty spot on. If you haven't tried Jazz Jack Rabbit on the go yet, I can definitely recommend it, as the game is proper hidden gem. In fact, there are some Jazz Jack Rabbit easter eggs hidden in the games like Fortnite and Horizon Zero Dawn, so that's gotta tell you something. Pizza. Number 2. Vita Voyager. It is a port of Star Trek Voyager Elite Force Holomatch multiplayer mode, another awesome port made by no other than Rin himself. I like this guy's game ports choices still more and more. Despite the fact that there isn't much to do in this game in the form of story or missions or nice environment, as there is no single player option, just online and local multiplayer. I still do consider it to be a solid port. Who wouldn't want to be in the shoes of Chakotay or Captain Janeway and face the Klingons, the Species 8472 or Borgs on the board of the legendary Voyager Holomatch suite? Sweet? I certainly would want to face them even with the safety protocols turned off. It wouldn't really be like a dream come true, that would be meeting with 7 of 9 in real life, but it would be really close. You can even choose from some stunning models, not that it would matter as it is a first person shooter so you can see just the weapon and not the person holding it, but it is great to have a choice anyway. There are some truly cool ones like Arachnia, Borg Janeway, Borg Queen, Chaotic, Proton, Chakotay, Gauron and even Kaelis. 
I just wish I could see them so I could feel like a genuine Starfleet commander. I know I sound a bit like a broken record, but man, just imagine that. The game runs pretty smoothly. You can select from some proper arsenal of weapons of mass destructions, such as phaser compression rifles, tetrium pulse disruptors, compound grenade launchers, and even arc welder. There is some nice time to have in this game and if you feel intrigued, just give it a shot on your PS Vita. By the way, if you enjoy the content, please subscribe to the channel as there is more to come. Mrtkos. On the number 3 I've got Gem RB, which stands for Game Engine Made with Pre-Rendered Background. It is a portable open source re-implementation of BioWare's 8 Infinity Engine versions allowing to run Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale and Planescape Torment, plus their expansions and mods. It was ported by the North Fear, it may contain some bugs, widescreen mode and native Vita resolutions are supported, but the performance is gonna be lackluster. So it's recommended to use 4x3 ratio with 640x480 that is in 15 to 30 FPS range. Also please keep in mind these games are relatively large in size, I'm using the Icewind Dale with the 1.7 GB and if you wanna use the Baldur's Gate with expansions that one is like 3.7 GB so be ready to have some free storage available. All of these titles are basically role-playing video games set in the Dungeons and Dragons Forgotten Realms. There is some nice storytelling, resonant music and the gameplay is focused mainly on combat, often against large groups of enemies with dialogue driving the main story. The look and feel of these RPGs is similar to the original Fallout games, though combat is in the real time as opposed to a turn-based system in there. Then you just need to create party of up to 6 characters, earn experience points and level up, which will grant different characters different benefits slash abilities. I can still enjoy this kind of games, though yet again the abstraction here are for me mainly controls. It was designed for mouse and keyboard and 15 inch monitor, not for the tiny joysticks and 5 inch OLED panel, hence the drawbacks are significant and ever present. The deal here again is to either have messed up controls and this exquisite RPG on the go or to have nothing at all. I guess we can all agree what is going to be the answer to the dilemma. We want to have it on the go no matter what. Number 4 and Redneck, which is a Redneck Rampage port for PS Vita. Originally released in 1997, developed by Zatrix Entertainment and published by Interplay. It is a first person shooter that doesn't take itself too seriously. In fact, it is anything but serious, so it is safe to say Reninga Tamanta knows the best which games are worth porting and I truly admire this approach What's more, I'm hoping it will last him for the rest of his life, as you know, it is his passion, thus he needs to flourish it even further. Carpe diem, bro. The port itself plays really well, you can change between 4x3 and 16x9 ratio, frame rate is solid, the controls are also doable, it just took me a little while to figure out how to set it up properly, as when you start, you strafe with your right joystick, and you turn right and left with the left one, so you just need to fiddle with the axis settings and you are good to cause some irreparable havoc. I did confront one more obstacle along the way to make the game function on the PS Vita. I had the right files, the right VPK, however the game wasn't having any of it. Wasn't having? Hadn't, hadn't, half, didn't have? Who knows. Basically I've just tried to run it and uh, it crashed time and time again. Then I used my well-trained, well-tried tactic to delete everything and start from the scratch and it resolved it yet again. I still don't know what caused the game to crash as all I did was that I've just changed the order of steps. Like at first I've installed the VPK from Vita Homebrew Browser, 
then I've uh, transferred the files in the folder and that should have been it, uh, but it wasn't. So after that I've created the folder first, then transfer the data and the VPK second from my laptop, then I have installed the VPK via the Vita shell and then I tried to run it and uh, it didn't crash, lucky me. And you too, as I wouldn't be able to include the Redneck Rampage in this list. And it totally deserves to be here, as it's completely nonsensical title, which is what everybody adores and seek out, hence, here it is. And it is rock solid with its psychobilly and co-punk music score, hillbilly theme, its delicious moon pies and pork rinds, and of course we can't forget about the silly drunk meter, which when it reaches its maximum drunk level, the character would simply fall down, followed by the sounds of vomiting and the loss of all movements regardless of user input. Sounds like a music to my ears. <laughs> the Redneck Rampage rain rocks through the forgotten realms of the fictional Arkansas town. If it appeals to you, feel free to experience it with your own consciousness. Number 5. Like usually, I have saved the most inviting port for the last, that being Vita Hexen 2, which is a port of Hexen 2, an old school dark fantasy first person shooter video game developed by Raven Software and published by It Software. The port is brought to you by Slim Shady. I mean, the port is brought to you by no other than the king of ports, the Rin himself. I infer we got a lot in common with the king himself. Long live the king. Viva la revolution. But you know the saying, on the highest throne in the world, we still sit only on our own bottoms. I like that one, but I'm sure I don't need to stress it. I still remember seeing the Hexen 2 for the first time. It was on our computer class in the school back in the day. We was presented with some boring homework. The teacher left us alone and one of my peers, sitting next to me, stopped with the homework immediately and started to loading up some crazy dark and violent game, which ultimately ended up being the Hexen 2. And uh, to my bewilderment, I found it tempting, thrilling and teasing all at the same time. My first affair with first person shooter was with Wolfenstein, though Hexen was different cup of tea. More dark, more elusive more violent and more breathtaking when you were smashing the enemies to pieces with the gauntlets of annihilation, again like a music to my eyes, or rather music to be murdered by. Either way, it was hard to argue with my affection towards it and I can still feel it when I load it up on my PS Vita and I'm getting ready for the forgotten and damned demon souls to get the best of me. If you are prepared for such a heavy load, just load it up on your PS Vita 2 and let it entertain you. And what about you guys? Have you played any of these retro gems? If so, are you getting the port for the PS Vita as well? I'm really glad Vita scene is still staying strong. I would even argue it is stronger than Switch scene, at least on the YouTube platform, as I'm sure Nintendo is having a great pleasure in copyright striking these videos. So at least Vita is protected against this kind of greedy beast called gradual disintegration. If this video put a smile on your face, please give it a thumbs up, it means a lot to me and to the YouTube algorithm. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel as there is more quality content coming your way. Thanks for watching guys and see you in the next one. Peace. You fucking kill me? Fuck off.